Greetings everyone and welcome to Storytime with Rob. Seems like it's been a long time since I've been sitting here, but you know, we got back from our trip a week or so ago and uh, it is really, really nice to be home. I love fall. It's by far my favorite time of the year. That crisp, fresh morning air and nice, cool and warm days. It's beautiful. Love it. And you can see we harvested some stuff from our little garden and uh, wife's got the decorations out. So it's just a beautiful time of year. So my story today comes from a book by one of my teachers in college, George Durant. And he was a phenomenal teacher, one of the best. And uh, I just want to share a story that he wrote and uh, hope you enjoy it. This is from his book, Look at the Sky by the way, if you're interested. <clears throat> I've been told that a traveler driving through Manti, Utah, stopped, rolled down his car window, and asked a farmer unlocking a gate near the road, how do I get to Salt Lake from here? The farmer replied, well, you can go up several miles, then turn left, go through Moroni, and continue on to Nephi. Get on the freeway, head north, Salt Lake City. Or, you can go past the turnoff and go through Thistle and then down Spanish Fork Canyon to the freeway, go north, and you'll get to Salt Lake City. After considering the alternatives, the visitor then asked, Does it matter which way I go? The farmer, who now had the gate opened, replied, Not to me it didn't. <laughs> I thought that was funny because... <clears throat> It really doesn't matter to him. Um, some things don't really matter, but other things matter a lot, okay? <clears throat> for example, directions for getting to some places could be confusing for a time, but eventually you'd get there in the end. It doesn't really matter what route you take or which directions you follow. However, the directions you follow to arrive to happiness matter a lot. Because if you go the wrong way, you may never get there. The directions to happiness matter more than the directions to any other destination. Sometimes, as we travel through life, we get confused, take some unwise turns, and begin to travel the wrong way, the way to unhappiness. The consequences of going the wrong way are illustrated in the following story. This is one of my favorite little stories that he wrote. Two beginning but lucky deer hunters, <clears throat> it being hunting season right now, had shot a big buck. They were dragging it to camp when an experienced hunter came up the trail, observed that they were pulling it by its hind legs. He helped. He helpfully suggested, if you fellers pull that deer by its horns... You'll be dragging it with the grain of the hair, and it will go much more easily. Taking this advice, the hunters took hold of the horns and dragged the deer for another hour. Finally, one said to the other, You know, he was right. It does drag so much easier this way. <laughs> yes, replied the other hunter, but we're getting further and further from camp, as you can see. <laughs> Often we, we, like those two deer hunters, become confused in our direction. We move ahead only to learn that the things we are doing are leading us away from rather than toward where we want to be. Thus we move further and further away from the fulfillment, the security, and the joy of our longed-for camp. We become lost in the foreground of life. The frustrations, the details, the competitions, the duties, the seeming necessities, the so-called fun. And finding ourselves in the midst of these things, we lose all sense of direction. It is then that we need to look up and see the sky. In doing so, we can find the bearings that will help us adjust our direction and get us on the right road, the road to happiness. Um, he then recalls an experience he had in college in one of his classes. And I can relate to this because I was an art major in college myself. 
He said, <clears throat> I recall the first art class I took way back in my early college days. It took all the confidence I could muster just to enroll in the class. I knew that everyone else in the class would be Leonardo da Vinci's, and I'd suffer much self-inflicted humiliation as I compared my meager abilities with theirs. I did my first painting for the class in watercolors. It turned out a little better than I thought it might <clears throat> when I first put the paint on the paper. Even so, I was shocked and filled with fear <laughs> when the teacher announced, I see that most of you have completed your first painting. So let's all put them up here along the wall. And when they're all in place, we will criticize one another's work. I thought to myself, I didn't know we'd have my picture up on the wall to be criticized. If I'd had known that, I would have never taken this class. But having no choice, I reluctantly put my picture on the far right of the display. I hoped that the criticism would begin with the pictures on the left side and maybe the class time would end before it was my turn. Or I hoped at least they'd use up all their criticisms on the other paintings before they got to mine. As the discussions of the first few paintings were taking place, I didn't say anything about anybody else's efforts. I hoped my silence would indicate that I had no desire to criticize their work, and then, if they were good Christians, they wouldn't say anything about mine either. But the clock moved so slowly and the discussion so rapidly that with five whole minutes remaining, all eyes except mine focused on my work. My insecurities made it so that I could not muster the courage to even look up. As everyone looked at my painting, there were several seconds of silence. I've been there. I know what this feels like. Then I heard a girl's voice in a quiet, kindly tone. She said, I like the sky. Those four words gave me a small feeling of confidence. I lifted my eyes and looked up at the painting. To myself, I said, by George, that is a nice guy. From the other side of the room, a fellow spoke up, but he's got the foreground all fouled up. In my mind, I responded, why don't you look at the sky? <laughs> and then I thought, next time, he won't be able to say such a thing because next time my foreground will look as good as my sky. So now, many years after that experience, I say to all of you and to myself what I said then. Why don't we look at the sky and then go to work and beautify our foreground so it will also be like our sky. I love that story, and I think it's important for us to remember that we need direction in our life, and as we move forward in whatever direction we're going towards happiness, happiness, that we continue to look at the sky, be positive, look at those things that bring us happiness, and strive to, I don't know, uh, be positive, be that light that everybody's magnified to. And uh, anyway, I hope you enjoy that. I hope you, in the following months and years, look to the sky and set some lofty goals. And until tomorrow, be safe. <laughs>